In this video, we're going to be looking at how to graph and interpret qualitative data sets. Below are tables comparing the number of part-time and full-time students at two colleges in the spring 2010 quarter. The tables display their counts, which is the frequencies, but then also the percentages or the proportions, which we call the relative frequencies. We call these tables frequency tables. Now, it's really important to understand why it might be um, to your advantage to show both the frequencies and the relative frequencies. For example, if you look here, 13,000 students is definitely larger than 10,000. However, when you look at that relative to the number of students at the college, part-time is a little more than half of the student demographics at this De Anza College. However, part-time students at Foothill College make up over two-thirds. We can also look at this data in a graphical way by looking at a pie chart where the wedges are based on those proportions and we look at the percentages. When you do that and you then can compare these two pieces, you can really see that the percentage of part-time students at Foothill College is larger than the percentage of part-time students at De Anza College. If you like, you can also use Excel to create these graphs. I will pull up Excel and show you how to do that. All right, so in here I have an Excel document. Um, I have already loaded in the frequencies here. You can just highlight those cells that you want and then go to Insert. And then you should be able to just do a 2D pie chart. It might want us to do the totals here. I'm going to do that just really quickly by having the sum. Okay, let's see if that then creates the two different ones. If not, then I might need, oh no, okay. So, sorry about that. We're just going to make them side by side. So you just do them as two separate ones. Then you don't have to worry about calculating percentages and drawing them out and finding angles and those types of things because technology does all of that for us now. All right, let's go back to our graphs. All right, another type of graph that you might want to look at is a bar graph. Now in this bar graph, we did um, use the frequencies versus the relative frequencies. Here you can see number of enrollment a little bit nicer. Okay, so you can see that overall Deonza is going to have more students. Um, and you can look at the relative um, frequency difference. But what you can't see in this is actual per, like percentages, right? Like it's hard to see necessarily the proportional differences like you can here in this graph versus the frequencies. So you can be like, oh yeah, there are more part-time students um, at De Anza than Foothill, but you can't really see the proportional difference between them as well. Now, can you see like obviously between here, like the difference between these two overall total, like this is about a third and this is about two thirds, sure. Where these are more 50-50, sure. Um, but really, um, the pie chart allows us to see that a lot better, or you could do the relative frequencies here instead. So if you wanted to do like out of a thousand or out of a thousand, a hundred percent, okay, and then create bar graphs there, then you might be able to compare 
the proportions a little bit better if that's what you're wanting to look at. All right, let's look at this. Let's say this is a different example, um, but let's say you get some data and you notice in that relative frequency table that they add up to more than 100%. Like what might be going on there? Well, it might be that the categories are not mutually exclusive. Or what I mean by that is that a student might be able to fall within multiple categories. If that's the case, then you're not going to have independent pieces, if you will, or mutually exclusive pieces. Um, so you might be able to just compare relative sizing to each other, but you can't really use a pie chart here because you're not dividing this up out of 100% and then to use a pie chart, you would have to have independent categories of each other. I should say mutually exclusive instead of independent. You have to have different, cat like each student can only fall into one category. Okay, so a pie chart you could not do in this case. All right, the last type of chart is a Pareto chart. Now, if you are looking at nominal level qualitative data, meaning order does not matter, in this case, um, it's ethnicity, okay, is the, is the ethnicity of students is what we're looking at. This graph would be just fine. Like that's probably the order in which the like answer choices are on the survey. However, if that you're like, mm, I just don't know that I want my graph to be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, like all crazy like that. It might be nice to just organize, not necessarily that you're ordering the categorical variable, but you're reorganizing so that you go top score down. This then allows you to see rankings, right, for the highest proportion. And so it's just a nice way to organize a nominal level variable so that you can see which category has the highest percentage and which one has the lowest percentage very easily.